Truth Speakers, a Burning Lights Ministries podcast. I am Katie Bowers, full-time mom and full-time evangelist. I'm here to encourage you to be and train the next generation of truth speakers. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share, and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about giving God an unconditional yes. Now, to me, this is one of the basics of Christianity, really. Um, Just simply being willing to give God um, yes, a yes, no matter what he's asking us to do. Um, Because, you know, I, I, if you're new here, um, I, if you don't know me personally, um, I am a full-time evangelist, I'm a wife, and then I'm a mother of three small children. Now, um, I don't know what how much knowledge you have of full-time evangelism, but it's a very um, stressful um, and fast-paced life. We preach um, anywhere between 250 to three to- 300 times every single year, and so um, that is times we are away from our home sleeping in a different bed you know uh we so we're always on the go no matter what we're doing in our lives and then if you add three small children to the mix it gets a little bit chaotic and a little bit um uh, stressful extra stressful (laughs) at times and something that people come up to me and say all the time is um i don't know how you do it well, here's the thing. <laughs> um, I don't either because I'm simply living under the grace and mercy of God for one. Second of all, if you make something um, a priority in your life, you're going to make sure whatever needs to happen for that thing to take place will happen. Um, and the only way to me that this lifestyle has even been possible is knowing I'm in the will of God in my life, understanding that I am right where God wants me to be. I'm not here by accident. Um, I'm not here just because I want to. I, I, I love my life. I like being here, but that's not the only reason I'm here. I'm here because I'm called to be here. I think that is such a crucial part of you know, everybody was like, well, just say yes to God, just say yes to God. Okay, well, let's make sure that what we're doing is exactly what God wants for us to do in our life. Because if someone's saying, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm called to preach. So I guess I'm just supposed to go do exactly what Katie does. I'm supposed to go preach 300 times a year. Well, that may not be, and more than likely is not the yes for your life. Um, but if you're doing what God wants you to do, It is possible and you will succeed. The only thing you have to do is say yes, no matter the cost, no matter where he has you. And so I'm going to talk today a little bit about um, just kind of my perspective on what that looks like in my own life. Um, And I know everybody's story is going to be different. Everybody's call is going to be different and everybody's life is going to look a little bit different. But I hope what I say today just kind of encourages you to believe that if God called you to do what you feel a conviction to do or what you feel God is leading you to do, um, you are able to do it. Um, Because I know certainly I felt a little bit like Moses (laughs) Uh, at every, every single step of the way. Moses, God called Moses at a burning bush. You know, God... He, he made this spectacular show of his power of Moses comes up on this burning bush and the bush is not consumed. I mean, it's a, it's an, and he hears an audible voice of God coming out of this bush. I mean, this is insane. Um, and Moses responds to God's call with, Oh no, not me. Are you kidding? I'm slow of speech. <laughs> and here we find Moses's insecurity of why he can't do what God's called him to do. And you all know the story of how, you know, God had mercy on him and he ended up using um, Aaron, Moses' brother, to help him through it. But eventually it came down to, um, for a, a second time now, the children of Israel uh, were thirsty a second time. Now, I'll, I'm running through this, this, this story really quickly, but 
there were two different scenarios where uh, after God had um, showed his marvelous power in Egypt um, and through the 10 plagues, and I mean, he's parted the Red Sea. Now they're out here in the wilderness and they get thirsty and everyone tell, looks at Moses ready to kill him, ready to stone him and said, why did you leave us out here? Why did you lead us out here to die? And, and so God speaks to Moses and said, use your rod, smite the rock and water came pouring forth. Well, Moses was obedient. It worked spectacularly. Uh, but later on down the road, a little bit of time had passed. Thank God he gives us time. Uh, the same situation happens. The children of Israel get thirsty. They all come to Moses, ready to kill him all over again. That sounds like church people, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but they come to Moses and they said, we're thirsty again. So this time, God didn't say, smite the rock. But God said, you remember that original call that I have on your life? Yeah, remember that day back in the burning bush when I said, I wanted to use you. I wanted to use your voice. He said, all right, now I want you to bring, come right back to that right there, that original call. And I don't want you to smite the rock. God said, speak to the rock. Moses, after a, some time had passed, God in his mercy had revealed his power to Moses he said, all right, now I want that. I still want that yes in your life. I'm still going to move for you. I'll still help you along the way. But you can't go any further until you give me this yes. I've revealed myself to you. I've given you mercy for a space of time. But now I want you to use your voice. And the Bible said that Moses, because of his unbelief, picked up his rod and smote the rock. And the scripture later on tells us that it was that act of unbelief right there at the rock where he smote the rock, smote that word of God um, that kept him out of being able to enter the promised land. Now, to me, things are getting a little bit, a lot more intense when, because I know what the promised land symbolizes. It, pro it, it symbolizes heaven. Oh my goodness, this is, okay, this is getting really intense to me now because now I'm realizing that if I don't give God my yes, he's going to, he might, he might, he might give me a space of time like Moses and he might say, okay, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you somebody to help you. But then if, after he's revealed himself, give me mercy, give me grace. If I don't give him a yes, we're talking about a heaven or hell issue going on here. Heaven or hell. Uh, this is getting intense. So how do I tell you this in my life? So Elijah and I had been married for about 10 months. Um, I was, um, let's see, we, I, got, I was 19 when we got married. So at this point, I was 20. I was a 20-year-old girl. Uh, we, were, we went full-time in the ministry um, the same time as when we got married. We were both evangelizing separately. But when we got married, we merged and went full-time together. Well, uh, 10 months into our marriage, um, God spoke to me. And he told me, I want the control, absolute control in your life. And um, this is kind of personal, but uh, the area that he dealt with me on is birth control. I wasn't allowed to use birth control. And, you know, I kind of make fun of myself now because I literally prayed, Jesus, I don't want to be 19 kids and counting. Please don't make me 19 kids and counting. <laughs> I, and because, um, you know, this really wasn't something I, I envisioned having kids. I want to have kids. You know, I wanted to have actually kind of a large family. But, you know, I was thinking like four or five would be a good number. That's pretty good. Um, but now God is telling me here, 20 years old with like 20 plus years of childbearing years left in me. All right, give me the control. Um, and I, I realized that it wasn't just simply using a preventative that was the issue or what that preventative was, but it was, I had a fear in me of giving God everything because I, I instantly was like, Oh my gosh, no, I can't do that. You know, um, nature will take its course and I'm going to end up with 25 kids. <laughs> you know, whenever there was so much unbelief in that mindset of, no, oh, God can't take care of me. God, I know that God literally put every single organ in my body and he can, he can close the womb and he can open the womb, but certainly not in my life. Well, that was just totally unbelief. And so God brought me in through this journey. Now I didn't know it, but I was going to have trouble being able to have kids at all. Um, I had a disease in my body and four years later, 
we still didn't have a baby. And I wanted a baby terribly at that point. It was a long drawn out season in my life. Long story short, I'm not going to go into that testimony, but God healed me. Thank you, Jesus. He's still healing people, but he healed me. And, um, you know what happened? Um, I got pregnant, thank God. And four years after God spoke to me and said, go off of birth control, we gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl. And I was so excited. She was a hard baby, but the delivery was pretty much, I mean, um, I went in with a half-hearted decision not to get an epidural. I did get an epidural and then I ended up, I mean, it was a fine birth. It was fine. Well, um, let's see. It was about, Rhea had just turned one. And I found out I was pregnant again with um, our son, Elisha. Um, and this time, um, it was a little bit more intense. God led me through a journey that I'm not going to go into. But um, during the delivery of our son, Elisha, our daughter wasn't quite two yet. Um, and I, I was thinking the whole time, you know, our kids are going to be pretty close in age. I really didn't want to be pregnant this soon after, but here we are. And, you know, I'm going to love this baby regardless, of course. Well, I uh, go into the delivery room um, and four hours later, here I am staring at a new little baby boy. Thank you, Jesus. Except a beautiful situation went really sour really quickly whenever I started to hemorrhage and everything they did did not work. Um, and I knew I was in trouble when I looked up and saw the face of the doctor and all I saw was sheer panic and nurses were, were running around everywhere and I could feel a weakness overtaking my body. I knew that I was losing blood, blood very quickly. And you know, I, I'm a preacher. I think of the Bible, the life is in the blood. I'm thinking, okay, life is literally leaving my body right now. And I'm going to die if this doesn't stop. And, um, so, um, we, we took off praying and, um, I, I was praying out loud. I didn't, you know, in that moment in my head, I was, I was telling my, myself things that I was supposed to like, all right, Katie, you heard God. This is God's plan. Childbirth is natural, but not just that, but you're here because you're obeying God to have children. And of course, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking this is only happening because you didn't give your body a better break. And, and, you know, this is only happening because, um, you know, you didn't really hear God. And all of a sudden I'm in this huge, um, battle of unbelief of, did I hear God or did I not now? Um, we started praying and it was a total miracle. Uh, I, I was praying out loud and I stopped praying for just a moment just to look at my new baby. Cause I thought, all right, if this is my last moments on earth, I want to at least look at my son. And I stopped praying for a minute and the doctor reared up and yelled at me and said, don't you quit praying. It's the only thing working. She said, we've tried this and that and this and that. But ever since you started praying, the bleeding has started slowing down. And so I looked at Elijah and said, are you praying? Let's go, let's do this. And so I had that boost of faith. Thank God he's in this room with me. I feel like I'm dying and it literally looks like I'm dying, but Jesus is still with me. You know, they, I think the psalmist prayed it beautifully. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You want to know why? Because God is with me. If you don't, if you uh, don't remember anything else from this video today, I want to tell you right now, God is with you. Yay, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You might feel like you're dying. You might feel like you are a crazy person with this ridiculously radical faith and a voice that you simply just believe that you've heard directing your life. Let me tell you, you might be in the valley of the shadow of death, but you don't have to fear evil because the Lord Jesus is with you. He's walking with you. You're in the palm of his hand and no man can pluck you out. And so uh, by a supernatural work of the Holy Ghost, the bleeding totally stopped. God did a miracle in my life and he spared my life. Now, okay, so I've told you about how God has called me to walk this journey of um, having total trust and giving him total control over how many kids I have. And then 
Now I've told you about how I had this problem of hemorrhaging. Now, if you, uh, if this happens to you, the doctor and the nurses, everyone in the hospital is going to tell you, this will more than likely happen again to you. You are high risk to hemorrhage again after it's happened once. So I've got this in the back of my mind. I've just had an extremely traumatic birth um, without going into detail. Um, I didn't have an epidural with Elisha, that birth I just explained. And they had to do some extremely painful, um, invasive things to try to get the bleeding to stop. And um, I can honestly say what I endured during that was worse than the unmedicated birth. And so there was a trauma and a fear that went along with um, what I had went through during the, the time that I was hemorrhaging. And so I'm here praying, oh Jesus, please give me a break. Please give me a break in between the next baby because I know I'm going to have another baby. But Lord, at least give me a break. <laughs> you know, uh, Lord, at least, you know, two years would be awesome. You know, I'd love a two year break. I, and, you know, because, you know, I almost died, Jesus. You know, I'm laying it all out for him. You know, I almost died, God, you know. And um, 10 months, 10 months, y'all, 10 months after I've had this traumatic experience, I take a pregnancy test and it is positive. <laughs> and to tell you I was a mess would be an understatement and of course because of our life we were preaching that night <laughs> and we're sitting in the car before church and I'm a blubbering idiot I mean I'm just going nuts I'm just I'm just crying and I'm losing it and Elijah looks at me you know 10 15 minutes probably before service and he just looks at me and he said Katie, you need to get it together. <laughs> Thank God for a husband that'll tell me the truth. Katie, you need to get it together. Um, and so I was like, all right, or I'm just going to, I'm going to sober up. I'm going to walk in here. I'm going to put a smile on my face and nobody's going to even know what is wrong with me. <laughs> well, I did it. Well, that night during service, God spoke to me and Elijah through some events and we both came away knowing this child in my womb at that time uh, is called for such a day as this. And he's going to be have a special anointing on his life. And it's going to be for a special people. That So he had to be born. He had to be conceived and had to be born at a certain time. And so um, I, I held on to that. Not only did God give me, you know, I'm here by the hand of God. I'm here um having babies so close together because he's called me to this um but he i'm doing this at this season he didn't give me a very long of a break because of this we're called we're in the hand of god we're chosen and so um but you know i would be totally lying to you if i told you i didn't struggle with um the idea of oh my gosh what if i die this time what if the bleeding doesn't stop this time? What if I do hemorrhage? And then what if the bleeding doesn't stop? And so all I can think about is Rhea and Elisha, my two older kids. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, they're good. What if I, if I die, they're going to be raised without a mother. And I know they have an incredible dad, but everybody wants their mama. And I, I mean, oh my goodness, I was a mess. So finally one day, um, I was praying. We were in a service, and it was just a divine move of the Holy Spirit. It was just one of those services that was just simply ordained by God. Thank God He gives us these. And I was literally on the floor, and I said, Lord, I really need deliverance from this. I really need some peace. You know, and in my mind, I was thinking he's going to tell me I'm not going to die. He's going to tell me, you know, that everything is going to be okay. You're not going to hemorrhage, Katie. Well, he spoke to me, but he didn't exactly say what I wanted him to. <laughs> uh, thank God in his infinite wisdom, he knows exactly what to say every time. But um, he spoke to me and he said, what if it was my will for you to die and another woman to raise your children? And 
And to be completely honest with you, my first reaction was, are you kidding me? It was anger. <laughs> it was like, surely not another woman. As if dad wasn't bad enough. I don't want another woman raising my babies. And then I started getting mad at Elijah. Like, why would you marry someone after me? <laughs> but the truth is, after I got over myself, I realized that he was not telling me his plan. He wasn't telling me his will. He asked me a question. And I know something about Jesus. When he asked me a question, he already knows the answer. And so by him asking me the question, he was revealing me. He's revealing me. And so I realized I had more confidence and faith in my pitter, pitiful uh, mothering as I did that the Lord had my children in the palm of his hand. And no matter who raised my kids, I've dedicated them to Jesus. And he's going to make sure they're taken care of. And I realized, oh, my goodness. I've thought that I've just been doing a good job by myself. I've thought that my kids are even alive now because I am good at being a mom. No, 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 no. The only reason my children are alive, the only reason I'm even here right now is because of the grace of God and the call of God on my life. And so that was a mindset change for me. And so I realized, okay, I'm going to have to trust God. I believe he's, he's called me to this, and I believe this baby is here on purpose. I don't believe this is an accident. I believe this is ordained by God, and I'm just going to have to trust him through this. And, you know, my prayer is still consistent of, Lord, don't let me hemorrhage. But here we are, two weeks late. That baby, I didn't think that baby was ever going to come out. 42 weeks later, Owen decided to be born on Christmas Eve. What is it with this kid and the timing? He is impeccable timing, two weeks late, Christmas Eve, and then the time of the conception was just hard. <laughs> um, but um, here it is, and I'm sitting there, and everything seems to be going good. The contractions really weren't that bad. I went through the whole labor without an epidural again, had the baby. Everything seemed to go okay. He got stuck for about three hours and that was miserable, but we made it through it. God helped us through it. And 24 hours later, I'm sitting there on the hospital bed, surrounded by my children. My mom's in the room. My husband's in the room. I get up to go to the restroom and I start passing blood clots the size of softballs, if not bigger. And the nurses come rushing in. I'm getting weak. I, they get me back to my bed and I'm still passing these clots and I watch them carry my babies out of the room, my older two kids. And I thought to myself, I didn't even get to tell them bye. <laughs> and I thought, what if that was the last time I'm going to see my children? And the rubber met the road, and I had to make a decision. Did I hear God, or did I not? And even more than that, do I believe that Jesus is with me? And do I believe that he really is looking at me right here in this moment? And is he for me? I had read a scripture um, and I had really read it every single day um, for the last couple weeks of the pregnancy. And it was in Psalms. I should have made a note of it, but I can't even remember where it is. But I, all I could remember was one phrase. I wished I could quote it while I was laying there. But the only thing I could remember about the passage of Scripture that the Lord led me to read every single day to help build my faith was, in a time of famine, he will not let me die. And I, I, I kept quoting that to myself. Lord, I feel like I'm in a famine. I don't feel like I have any strength. I'm surrounded by fear. I feel like I'm fighting the ultimate fight for my faith right now to simply believe I'm going to be okay. My baby's going to be okay. And not only that, but no matter what happens right here, right now, even if I die, I trust that God's going to take care of my children. And I trust that his ways are high above my ways. His thoughts are high above my thoughts. So I'm going to choose to believe that I'm going to come out of this to raise my children. But even if I don't, all is well because I'm here because of the Lord. He led me here. 
And this time, you know, with the Elisha, when I hemorrhaged the first time, it resolved in probably a matter of minutes, maybe an hour. This time it was several hours of uh, hemorrhaging, not hemorrhaging, not. And it was just like, it would, I would just, it would just happen in spurts. And so for hours, I felt like I was nose to nose with the spirit of fear. And not just that, but I was just fighting for my faith. And eventually everything stopped, all the bleeding stopped, and God brought us through it. And I looked around and, and God moved for me once again. The next morning, um, the doctor came in and he said, they had taken my blood work that morning. And, they, and he said, I don't even know how this is possible. But he's looking at my chart and he said, your iron is better. You know, your blood, your iron is higher than any other girl on the floor right now and none of them went through what you went through yesterday so i knew god is with me he healed me he brought my blood up i mean that's literally impossible for that to happen without a blood transfusion or anything you're i mean with elisha i had issues months after and here i am and i know god is with me and he helped me he didn't even let me have lasting side effects from losing so much blood and um here I am yet again, and I had to make a decision. This has happened twice now, but do I believe that I'm called of God and I'm doing His will? And I had to make a decision. Am I going to go on birth control or am I not? And I had to make a decision. Will I give Jesus my unconditional yes? Yes, but what if I die next time? Yes. Oh, but what if uh, I leave my children next time? Yes. But what if I have to endure another traumatic birth? Yes. What if um, it hinders the ministry? Yes. No matter the price I have to pay, my answer will always be yes, because I trust that his way is higher than mine. And I trust that he knows exactly what he's doing. And I can honestly sit here and tell you right now, the first time I hemorrhaged, I saw, I saw God do a miracle instantly in my body that even a doctor couldn't deny in the moment. And I've watched God use that testimony of the doctor, you know, yelling at me, don't quit praying all over the country. And I'm amazed at how many people it has affected. So I felt like God increased my faith for healing first time. Second time, uh, I had to conquer some things. And, but it totally and completely transformed my faith both times. And I can truthfully say it changed me for the better. And I, I wouldn't be where I am in God if it weren't for those situations I just told you about. Now, maybe this is nothing like what God is dealing with you about. Maybe God's telling you something along the lines of, I want you to preach or I want you to fast. Um, I, 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 I want you to just dedicate some things in your life to me. I dare you to have a reckless, radical faith that says, I know all the odds are not in my favor. I know that maybe I really am like Moses. Maybe in this situation, maybe in this aspect of my life, maybe I feel totally incapable and like I am not the person for the job. But I give him my yes, because if God called me to do something that was possible, I wouldn't need him. But he's called me to do something supernatural. So it's going to take a miracle for me to fulfill his will. Sounds like a great place to be. So I want to encourage you today. Give God an unconditional yes. Stand in the face of fear. Stand in the face of unbelief. Stand in the face of whatever is trying to stop you from that. Because on the other side of this thing, you're going to come out with a greater anointing and maybe you're just going to have people coming up to you saying, I don't know how you're, going, how you're doing this. I don't see how it's possible. And you're going to stand flat-footed, shoulders rolled back, head held high and say, I know how I'm doing it. It's by the grace and the mercy of God. And it's because I'm anointed and called. And because in my weakness, His strength is made perfect.